Hello everybody and welcome to JR Jeep. Uh, today I'm going to discuss a little bit about fridges. So you've probably heard me talk about this one before. The FC20 by Set Power. Great little fridge. I've used it a long time. Had a review on it on uh, the channel. But we're going to switch into something new and you will see what that is. Hi everybody and welcome back to JR Jeep. This is Lance speaking. Glad to have you stop by today. Um, as our intro said, basically we're going to discuss uh, updated fridge option. So here I have the PT55 by Set Power. Um, as you saw in the beginning of my video, I have been using the FC20 for quite a while, um, since last early last spring. That has basically stayed in my Jeep all the while. Um, I found it great for um, overnight or short weekend trips where I didn't need much stuff or it's just me camping. Mm -hmm. But coming up this next year, I am planning on some longer trips and I figured that is not going to fit the bill for that purpose. A couple other things to note before I talk about the PT55, just relating to the FC20. Again, that stayed in the back of my Jeep all this while. I have not had any issues with it. I generally carry a small power pack with me in the car, smaller than the one here, or can plug into the outlet if needed. What it's really great for is going to a grocery store if you're not planning on coming home right away and you have perishables, you can stick them in the fridge and not have to worry about them. Or say you're going on a day trip or on planned stop somewhere and that place has food available or some treats you want to pick up and take home with you, but again, you're not hanging home right away or you're not hanging right to your destination. That allows you to you know, put the stuff in there for safekeeping. Not, don't have to worry about anything perishing or anything going bad. So it's been really great for that purpose. I'm still going to keep it in the Jeep for that purpose on a regular basis. This will be going into the Jeep though on those longer trips as I mentioned. So PT55 and I've got some stuff here that I'm going to read off of. So please don't be alarmed if you see me reading, but I thought it to get all the information to you. I want to make sure not to miss some of the key points to this fridge. But just an overview, uh, if you're looking at the fridge here, as you can see this is bigger design than the F. It's a 58 quart fridge. It does have aluminum construction as well as a textured like leather textured um, plastic construction. This is dual zone, thus the dual controls. And this does have two doors for that purpose. Um, one of the things that's really nice, they do have lights on in here, uh, which I will show you later when I take a close up of it. It is lined metal wise and it is a heavy duty construction. It's almost like two inches thick, the walls, um, to allow for the refrigerator to stay chilled. Um, you can do both zones as a refrigerator, you can do both zones as a freezer, freezer, fridge, whatever you want. Keep in mind this side above the controls is slightly smaller because um, you have your compressor below there. So that, you know, it's great. You can still stick a two liter bottle in here and be able to close a little bit upright. Um, what I found it be good for is I like to put my beverages and stuff in here. So like if you're using canned soda, canned beer, maybe a wine or two, you can stick that in there and not have to, and water of course, you can put that in there and have plenty of room for that product. This side, if you're carrying a fair amount of groceries, it's nice, it's deep, you can get a lot of stuff in here. Uh, you could counter it, but I don't think you're gonna need that much <laughs> for your uh, liquid on the go, but that's entirely up to you. A um, couple key components to this fridge. Number one, it does have a minimum and max mode. So what does that mean? So PT55 is a 12 volt refrigerator. The minimum max modes, which allows you to switch freely between those modes, allows you for a camping fridge to cool down quickly in a short period of time. So if you use the max mode, it will generally cool it down to, say you want 32 degrees in about 15 minutes. And while it's doing that, it's going to pull about 52 watts of power to bring it down to that temperature. So it will use more power at that time. But then, so like if you want to get down quick, and sometimes I do this even with the FC20, which can do the same thing. You want to cool it down quick, you can do so. Then click it over to uh, minimum mode, 
and that conserves energy. Now on this fridge, what that basically means is if you turn it down to minimum mode, it's going to pull about 38 watts. Now keep in mind that's not continuous. I have tried out the fridge a little bit and I'm going to show you a little bit what it draws when we um, get to that point. But basically it goes down to about 36 watts. And it's going to do that while it's cooling. So once it gets down to temperature, it's going to kick off when it's not needed, which will draw nothing at that point, um, and kick in again. When it usually kicks in, usually draws maybe a little bit better than 40 from what I've seen, and drops back down into that 30 realm again. And chills down as necessary till it gets to the proper temperature, then kicks off. So it is going to conserve power on a regular basis. Um, I tried it with something like this, and I did have two two liter bottles in here of water. Um, in my try of this with this power pack, which is basically an older Blue Yeti, um, this is the EB55, which has been very popular for quite some time. Um, I can get close to two days with this, using this in the trial. Uh, with my FC20, I could generally get about two and three quarter days. So just the nature of the beast, this being a bigger refrigerator, um, it's not going to be able to chill it down quite as um, long of a time. But I am looking to upgrade this as well. So look into that for future videos that I'm going to do. I am happy with the Blue Yeti um, system, although there are some other ones out there now that I'm sort of keeping my eye on. I'm not sponsored in any way by any of these companies, just so you know, that I'm talking about. Um, the fridge, if I put a link in it or I put a link in for this, this is simply to the Amazon store. So if you are looking at the products or want some more information, or sometimes these are on deal, you can purchase them. I do get a small residual from that, which I thank you for, but I am not endorsed by these companies. So, you know, you can take this as validation that I am using this product in the field myself. A couple other things in relation to this. It does have a three-year warranty in relation to the compressor. I found that quite impressive in relation to fridges in this price point. I mean, some of the higher-end fridges that are out there, Dometics and that, I believe are a five-year warranty, uh, which is phenomenal, but they are also pretty much almost double the price of this fridge for roughly the same size. Uh, the FC20, when I bought that fridge, was a great deal during um, early spring, I want to say it was like Valentine's something and they had some coming up now, I haven't looked recently, but it was less than like $175. It was very reasonable. And when you think in context to, you know, I'm not saying coolers are a bad thing, but when you think in context to some of those coolers out there, Yeti and Yeti lookalikes, which are well constructed. I, I've looked at them, I contemplated them in the past, but the whole thought about ice or if I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere for an extended period of time, Gang ice, and then also having stuff swim in water later on didn't really thrill me. And those aren't cheap. To get a bigger size cooler in those categories, you're looking usually at $250 to $500. So just something to take into account. The FC20, 20, 20 quart fridge, pretty much to get that in a Blue Yeti, you were probably looking at it close to $300. So just something to be aware of, plus ice. Um, this does have the dual zone system, as I was mentioning. Refrigeration range is from zero to 50 degrees. Fast cooling to 32 degrees in 15 minutes, as I mentioned. Cools down faster than a cooler. That I would take into account, basically, cooler you generally have to pre-chill. A lot of times what people do before they go in the field, they get a couple extra bags of ice, throw that in there to chill down the chest um, for a little while. Once it's chilled down, then they remove that ice put in fresh ice and pack their stuff. Again, you're using up more ice, but that's a way to sort of keep it cooler and let that second round of ice not melt quite as fast. Um, it is a user-friendly design. The controls are easy accessible, like I showed. What I like about this, you could turn this one of two ways in my uh, setup. If I turned it with the controls outward, it might be a little bit of a hindrance because my fridge slide is on the, pass the driver's side of the car. Um, it'd probably be easier for me to reach over from basically moving the chair forward. 
rear seat forward. Um, but if I put this the other way, um, which I tend to have right now with the FZ20, controls are easy accessible. It does have the aluminum body, as I mentioned, um, airtight latch, the handles, why plastic seem very well constructed and easy to hold on to. Battery protection. This is important for all of us when we're in the field, right? Um, 12, 24 volt refrigerator, don't worry. Set power provides triple battery protection. So what do we mean by that? You can choose between high, medium, and low modes, depending on how much power you have in your car. It's best with a 12 volt, probably to go into low mode. That way you are keeping enough battery in your car that this would cut out if it sensed that the battery level is getting too low on your automobile or Jeep's battery it would conserve enough power that you could start the vehicle. Um, that's a key importance if you're in the middle of nowhere, the last thing you want to have happen is not be able to charge up, get your the vehicle started. I would also state in that regard, just in case, um, always carry a battery pack. They're pretty reasonable nowadays. I mean, one I picked up and I'll actually talk about a little later, it cost me like $65. It's about the size of a small hard drive. Um, I haven't had to use it on my my car at all, but I've used it helping other people that have been stuck in places, and it's actually worked phenomenally well. So I was very impressed by that. That'd be one other suggestion always to have with you in your vehicle is extra backup to start your vehicle. So again, three-year warranty on this. That is phenomenal for a fridge of this caliber um, and price point. Um, fast cooling, the adjustment of temperature from 0 to 50 degrees, large capacity, and no ice needed. All in all, a really great value for the money. Um, what I am going to do is power this up with the Blue Yeti, just so you can sort of see the draw when it's initially put on. I am probably going to have it in low mode, um, but you'll see roughly what's going to be drawing in power on here so you have an idea. So, you can see the control panels have lit up. Down here we have the set, which is high, medium, and low. I currently have it set for low. In context to the compressor settings, compressor speed, there is max, like we talked about, which is going to draw more power, or minimum. I have it on minimum. The temperature of these is set to go to 32 degrees. Um, right now, you can see they're both at around 70, about 72 to 75. So we're going to let that go and see how long it gets down to temperature. While we're doing that, let's kick in the Blue Yeti again. So you can see right now, I hope, that it is drawing 33 watts of power, going up to 34. So that isn't bad. Now. It's not going to chill down quite as fast, but in my experience, we're going to see how long it takes. Uh, the FC20 didn't take that long, but it's a smaller fridge. So it's about three after 11 o'clock right now. So we're going to just pay attention and see how long it takes it to get down to 30 to high 30 degrees. Okay, let's see what happens. Hi folks, we're back. It is roughly, it's exactly 30 minutes from the time I last recorded. And as you can see, the temperatures are in the 30s of this right now. So not bad being in eco mode. It took about probably double the time it would have if we would have max mode. It probably would only taken 15 minutes. So it's just something to keep in consideration. You're in the field and you know, it's already warm. Just like we talked about before with pre-chilling a cooler by icing it first and then replacing the ice after it was chilled down, you could do the same thing in max mode. Just be aware it's going to draw some extra power, which may not be a big thing if you're on the go 
and the vehicle's running, so it's just drawing off the battery it's running at the time instead of your battery pack, because you can always turn it down to eco once it gets down to the, the temperature you wish. So at this point, I don't know if you can hear it, but the fridge is running. So it is drawing 44 right now, and it's chilling it down a little bit more. So not bad. Um, I was monitoring it during the whole deal of chilling down though. 44 to 46 is as high as it got in eco mode. It was generally staying in 36 to 38 when running. So just something to be aware of. So I hope you liked my review of the PT55 uh, cooler by Set Power. I think you will find this a great tool for in the field. I'm sure I'm going to, and I'll have further reviews in the future on this um, and how is how it worked and also including mounting in it, the Jeep. I am changing up my system in the back of the Jeep somewhat, and that is going to be upcoming video as well. Uh, just something in relation to storage and organization that I think is going to be make it much easier for myself. Like I said, I'm not endorsed by any of these companies in any way, shape, or form. Um, I do list that I do get basically a residual payback if you were to say go to my Amazon's link and purchase the item, but also it's a great place just to gardener information. I generally leave links always uh, in Amazon and in Set Power as well, so that you can go to either place and get that. If you do decide to buy through my Amazon link, I very much appreciate that. Thank you. It does help me in a small way to continue what I'm doing with this channel, to share out information with you, which I hope you find helpful. Um, until next time, I look forward to seeing you on the trail. If I don't see you on the trail, we'll see you here. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video and consider hitting the subscribe button. We will see you later. Bye-bye.